Good morning, and I would like to welcome you to the Sabbath morning service of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on Aldershot Street in St. John's. I'd like to welcome all those who are seated in the pews, as well as remotely welcome those who are on their way and haven't quite got here yet. And a special greeting to everyone who is not able to be here but is watching the live stream or who may be listening to the service over Lighthouse FM radio. However you are participating in this worship service this morning, we are glad that you are here. And just to remind us that we are glad each other is here, I would like to encourage people to take just a moment to greet those around you, and that could just be by turning around with a wave and a smile. If you're comfortable getting out of your seat and shaking hands with people, you can certainly do that as well. But uh, just take a moment, however, uh, however you do it, to smile at those around you. And just so that we all know that we are pleased to be in the house of the Lord this morning, pleased to be able to worship together. And on behalf of the congregation, I will give a wave to those on the live stream to let you know that you are an important part of our church family as well, even if you're not in the building with us this morning. It's a blessing to be here this morning after we were unable to worship here last week because of the electrical work that's being done. And you can see some of the evidence of that around you now with the two beautiful new monitors that are in place. Uh, I think there's more work yet to be done on the lights and some of the other electrical work, uh, but that's not going to interrupt our worship service. We're able to, uh, uh, to have everything uh, in place and the pews back in their, in their proper positions for this week, and it's, uh, it's a blessing to have some of that work done and underway, and it's a blessing to be worshiping here this morning. Um, I would like to introduce you to those taking part in the service this morning. Uh, my name is Trudy Morgan Cole, and uh, in a few moments, Alice Brown is going to be coming up to uh, lead us in our praise time. Our scripture is going to be brought to us this morning by Kofi Agjapang, and our offering call by Joshua Martin. Our uh, conference president, Pastor Ken Corkum, who had the uh, Sabbath school lesson, adult Sabbath school lesson earlier, will be having the children's feature uh, this morning. And uh, we are very blessed in our speaker this morning. Our message is going to be brought to us by Pastor Steve Kiono, uh, who I guess at this point is technically a guest speaker, but as I think everyone is aware by now, uh, Pastor Steve is going to be uh, later in the summer taking over as our pastor, so it's going to be wonderful to have an opportunity to hear him speak to us this morning. And we are so grateful to have uh, Pastor Steve and his wife, Olena, and daughter Elena, who you've already heard providing uh, some of the music this morning and who will be uh, bringing us our special music later on as well. Uh, it's a blessing to have them here in our congregation. And as always, of course, we also uh, thank the people who are not up front but are participating. I think we have Brian and Chris up in the booth today. Uh, we have Huey, and I'm pretty sure there's another, there's another deacon on as well. But it takes so many people to make a worship service possible, and we are so grateful to everyone for their contribution. Um, for our call to worship this morning, I would like to read just a few verses from Psalm 66. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Remember that in a few moments when we have praise time and make a joyful shout. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Lord, we have come to sing praises to your name this morning. And we have also come with our less praiseworthy thoughts, with our broken hearts, with our worries and our troubles. All of that, the good and the bad, we bring before you. We lay at your feet this morning for this hour of worship, and we pray that not that your spirit will be with us, for it always is, but that we will be aware and awake to the fact that your Holy Spirit is with us as we worship together and as we leave this place later today. Please help us to be in your presence as we worship today. In your name, amen. And I would like now to invite uh, Alice up to lead us in our, uh, uh, in our praise time. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I couldn't help but contemplate as Olena and Elena were playing that piece, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. And I thought, no matter what we faced this past week, when we look and turn our eyes upon our Savior Creator, 
our wonderful Lord, it puts everything else in perspective. Because it doesn't matter what happened this week. As long as we have Jesus is all that matters. And when we have him and we have that blessed hope that Pastor Ken spoke about in Sabbath school this morning, we have everything. Nothing else matters. And um, I'm just so grateful that we do have Jesus, our Savior, and he's soon coming back to take us home. So no matter what you face in life, we have Jesus with us. And there's an old song that says, when you can't see his plan, trust his heart. And I want us to turn this morning to number 462, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. If he is yours this morning, I want you to sing this right from the depths of your soul. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Number 462. <clears throat> What a wonderful privilege it is to praise our Savior each and every day, all day long. And we're going to tell him just how much we love him today as we turn to number 248. Oh, how I love Jesus, one of my favorites. Number 248.
wondrous love that our Father gave us on Calvary. What wondrous love. We'll stand as we turn to our opening hymn, number 516, All the Way, My Savior Leads Me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? But heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know what e'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. God has reasons. We may not always know what they are. But he has a reason, and we need to trust him. We need to keep our eyes on him. Let's stand as we sing, 516. <clears throat> God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Not, uh, I'll be re today I'll be reading from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 to 21. And now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep, uh, through the blood of the everlasting con uh, covenant, make you complete in Jesus in every good work to do his w will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, whom be glory forever and ever, amen. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Our offering today is for NAD Women's Ministries. Women are specifically designed by God to meet the needs of other women. Women's ministry is the best way to connect the church with unchurched women in your community and introduce them to Jesus Christ. Across the North American division, from the United States to Canada, and from Bermuda to Guam, Micronesia, the women of the church are engaged in serving others. 
They give Bible studies, hold evangelistic series, and minister to those in shelter for ba battered and homeless women. They, be they provide for the needs of families seeking refuge on our shores from oppressive regimes, teach English as a second language, tutor school children, and make bags of love for children who are displaced from their homes or from their parents. The women of the church are making a significant difference in their communities and their congregations. COVID didn't slow down ministry. It just moved online. Local conferences, union, and division women ministries offered online and live webinars, retreats, and seminars. Zoom became the place to get together to talk, study, discuss books, and pray together. Established in 1898 at the urging of Ellen White, the women's ministry offering funds, evangelistic outreach events, and leadership training for women across the North American division, these women partner with God in service through ministries that seek to encourage, equip, and challenge girls, teens, young adults, and women to grow deeply in God and serve Him uniquely with their gifts and talents. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today, and with it, we worship you with our whole selves. Please now and take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence. We pray that it reaches the unreachable, to affect the unaffected. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the powerful name. Amen. It's time now for the boys and girls to come forward. 
Shepherd for our children's story and uh, sit up here on the front pew as Pastor Ken prepares our story. You know, like a lot of North American Adventists of my generation, I grew up listening to the Bible stories on the radio by Uncle Dan and Aunt Sue. I don't know who else remembers them, but when I say Pastor Ken has a children's story, I almost want to say Uncle Ken has the children's story. But uh, we'll have the boys and girls come forward now. And just a reminder that when the children's story is over, everyone ages six and under is invited to go downstairs for a special children's program. Hello, Emma. Good morning. Have you ever been out to the ocean? Gone out to Cape Spear or maybe Signal Hill and have seen the big waves? Anyone been out by the ocean? Anybody at all? You know, when you go by the ocean, one thing you notice is those big waves just crashing against the rock. Are they ever powerful? Sometimes you see, you see the water going out, like the tides going out. And sometimes you see the water moving fast along the rocks. That's called a current. So you can have the crashing of the rocks. And when they crash, the water turns under. It's called undertow. And if you ever got into that water, you would be pulled under, and that wouldn't be very good. Or if you decide to go swimming and the tide is happening, you can find yourself being pulled out to the ocean. Ooh, and you swim all you could, you wouldn't make it because the, current, the tides are very strong. Or if you get into a current, it'll pull you out with the current. So that's why we don't go swimming in Cape Spear. And you go there, it's, there are signs up of people that went into the water and they didn't make it. So I'm going to tell you a story today about the ocean. And the story is that by... Arthur Maxwell. Now, the older people will know him, Arthur Maxwell. He's written the Bible stories and, and children's stories books. And he tells a story about himself in the ocean. He said when he was a young boy, a teenager really, a youth, he went to, to sell some books so he could earn money to be able to go to school. And he was given a bicycle. And they put him out on an island off Scotland. And when he was on this island off Scotland, he got on his bicycle and he went to the cottages and he presented the books and tried to sell them to the people. Then he would go on to the next cottage and try to sell the books. And he kept doing that. On this particular island, whew, he said about 12 miles he had to go on his bicycle and never saw one place, but finally got to the lighthouse. And the man in the lighthouse was really, really nice and bought one of his books. So he covered all the homes in that particular island and he says, where do I got to go? And he noticed there was another island not very far away. So he rented a boat, got himself over there, and he started to go around that island too and selling all his books. When he finished there, he says, where am I going to go? And then he heard that there's another island he could go to, and he didn't have to take a boat. You know why? Because when the tide is out, he was able to walk across on the sand. He says, oh, that's great. I don't have to pay for a boat then. So he got down by the water, and he saw the sand bars, which meant that there was sand, which was a hump, and then it went down into a little channel of water that he could walk through to another hump of sand and all the way across to the island. So he said, that's great. I'll start walking. He noticed two men ahead of him, and they were walking, but he noticed they were walking fast. He says, well, they must be in a hurry. But he watched where they walked, and they went down the water. It didn't seem to be too deep and kept on going. So he started, and he saw where they went. So he went across the water up to the next sand, and he says, where did they go? Where was the second one? I remember the first one. Where's the second? So he tested it and went higher and higher. And he says, ooh. So he rolled up his pant leg, and he finally met us, got his way over to the next one, and he kept on going. And then he noticed it was getting a little deeper, and he rolled his pants up some more, and all of a sudden it hit him. The water is getting higher, and there's less and less sand around here. What's happening? And he turned around and looked out into the ocean, and guess what? The tide was coming in. The waves are coming in, 
and he knew he was in trouble. So he started to hurry, and next time he got into the channel, it came up to his waist, but he still had a long ways to go. And he got hurrying and further and further, and finally he made it. Whew. And an older man came down, he said, I watched you, and I thought for sure you would drown because the water was coming in faster and faster and faster as the tide. And the tide gets deeper and deeper, and he would have drowned if he hadn't made it to the other side. But he did make it. But what an important lesson for us to remember. If we go to Cape Spear or we go to the Signal Hill, don't go for a swim. It's not the place you go for a swim, because some places the water can be very big, powerful, but it would take you out. Or if you're caught in a tide, it can take you out. Or if you're caught, caught in the current, it can take you away. Water is very powerful. The best place to swim is at Woody Acres. <laughs> Go back to your seat. The Lord loves you very much. As the children return to their seats or go downstairs for the children's program, uh, we are going to sing our prayer song, Now, Dear Lord, as we pray. And as that song ends, we'll kneel together and Pastor Steve will lead us in prayer. present ourselves before you with joy as a great family. Thank you that in the precious blood of your son, we have unlimited access to your glory by your mere grace. Clean our motive and we give the joy of your presence so that we rejoice as brethren in Christ. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are in need as Jenny's grandparents, Larry Pence, Cecilia Locke, Ellen O'Neill. My Lord, we, we pray also that this precious family must cope with it all its issues allow us to focus on you so that nothing can disturb our minds while we are with us. We leave all our anxiety, anguish, regret, and worries in front of you. We want to give ourselves to you with joy. Grant us to surrender completely in worship Make for this moment the heaven open to worship with the angel. Do not allow anything to disturb our joy and having you among us. Thank you for your immense love for us. In Jesus' name, amen.
it's a pleasure to me and my family to be among you. Um, we are very happy among you. And I send my greetings to those who see us through internet and also through the radio. We are grateful to God and to you because we felt that the first day, from the first day we were in this church of St. John's, your appreciation and signs of fraternity continually is expressed with you. I can say that you have very, for me, have been very friendly and kind. Thank you. Before coming here, we already prayed for you. Of course, not by name. But in general, we pray and fast that God will use us as missionaries here. Little by little, we'll, we will get to know each other better and establish friendships that can last a lifetime, forever. I have the joy of addressing the word of God to you. May God bless his word so that it may be a spiritual food for you. It may bring you guidance, strength, and security. My central prayer to you is, Lord, teach me to love you as you have loved me so they will understand that you have sent me to St. John. The truth is that this same prayer should be for each one of us because it is a commandment of Jesus Christ for all believers. That is the only way we will truly be united by supporting and tolerating one another in love. It is the only way that Christ will reveal himself to us as a church, as a family, as a believers. It's the only way to grow into grace and knowledge for our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Peter. So, is that as believers, like church, we are the supreme object of God's consideration. God has called and chosen you so that we grow together, exhorting each other, tolerating each other, submitted to one another in love, to be victorious in the trial that will come. I have come to accompany you on your way to heaven, brothers and sisters. I have come to learn from you and share what I learned from God and others. God has divine connection lined up for your life. There is a power in connection. Connection leads, leads to life. When a husband and a wife come together, babies are born. When the spirit of a person and the spirit of God come together, new birth. They take place. When brothers and sisters come together in unity, God commands his blessing. Psalms 133. When the disciples came together on the days of Pentecost, there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? The devil fears connection. His ultimate aim is to cut off you off from God. He tries to split marriage, to split friendships, to divide churches, to divide denominations and isolate people 
also our culture is more connected than ever before to the internet, phones, and social media. People are isolated and long, lonely than ever. So we need to pray more, much fervently. Can you bow down your head uh, just a minute? Dear lovely Lord, check off our superficial and fleeting way of thinking. Strengthen our mind in you and in no one and nothing but you. Put the seal of your spirit on us so that we learn to distinguish between truth and error that we can follow you closely every day for the rest of our lives, that we can find time for the most important thing that are you. Give us our offense, offenses among us and give us the security of your presence with us. With, with us. Teach us the value of our privilege to follow you closely and to listen to listen to your voice every day. Give us the assurance that you have chosen us for a mission here in St. John. Help us to wish you ardently every day. I to shake our warmth and conformity to this world. Speak to us now by your spirit and your word. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I don't know how many of you have heard about the poem Dash, the Dash poem. Some of you? Margaret? Dash poem is by Linda Ellis. Uh, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the days on the tomb, tombs, tomb, correct? Tombs, tomb, tombstone, tombstone. From the beginning to the end, he noted that the first came the day of birth, right? And spoke the following day with tears, but he said that mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represent all the time that they spent a life on earth. And now only those who loved them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you would like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged because you are alive, right? If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like you never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remember this special dash. My only last a little while. So when you eulogy, eulogy, eulogy is being read with your life actions to rehash. Would you be proud of the things they say about how you spend your dash? 
Linda Ellis. Very nice, right? Life is a journey, and I can be represented by a dash. The dash that is located in a grand stone between the day of birth and day of death. It's a powerful line or little line. It can, it can uh, represent a day of or 100 years, regardless of the length, length of time, it represents the Dutch child. I live here. Don't forget me. Don't forget me, right? Um, you, like me, when you start a, a week, long vacation, for example, it seems that you have so much time ahead, right? Then at the end of the vacation, the time just seems to speed by a phenomenal rate. Of course, always I run out of time to do all the things I wanted to accomplish or enjoy. The same thing happened with the Dutch. While you are young children, die last forever. <laughs> when we are in our 20s, all is 50, and nothing seems impossible. But the time we get to 50, time is speeding, speeding by rapidly. And often find myself trying to grab a moment for just a little longer. So, the secret of life is really not a secret at all. Faith, hope, and love are the most public secret known to the human being. So, but uh, do you know what are the statistics for about the mental health in Canada? Or here in Newfoundland and Labrador, 9.2%. And uh, have uh, mood disorder, people have mood disorder such as depression, bipolar disorder, mania, and dysphania. And in any given year, one in five Canadians experience a mental illness. By the time Canadians reach 40 years of age, one in two have or have had a mental illness. So this is impressive, right? So do you know that the mental and physical health are linked? Your spirit is very important, like your physical dimension also, and uh, interact uh, each other in your mind. So we have a lovely song that improves our faith and our hope and our love. Do you remember what is the, well, the most famous, probably the most famous sound? Sound 23. Do you know? Can you open your Bible and read with me? Psalm 23. Okay. Are you ready? All right. But, uh, well, we are to read, read Psalm 23 together. Okay? 
together. But I, I, I want to this challenge you. It's possible for you to present these uh, psalms or read, read, read these psalms also with your gestures. Do you know gest gestures? Gestures? Can you? Oh, for example, Psalm 23. For example, how, all right, the Lord, how do you will say with gesture, with your hand, or your expression? Oh. The Lord, can you repeat with me? The Lord is my shepherd. How do you say shepherd? How do you gesture or how do you articulate in, in movement? The Lord is my? I don't know conviction. Is it really the Lord your shepherd? Your shepherd? Yes? Okay, go ahead. The Lord? Good. But oh, the church is very quiet. <laughs> this is the, the, the house of the prayer. Right? It's, it's the house of the Lord. So please, the Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. What more? I shall no want. Repeat, please, with conviction. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lay, ah, very good, lay down in green. He led me or lead me beside the still waters. Good, good. Waters. Can you repeat with your hands, please? It's very important. He restores my soul. How do you say? Yeah, he restores. How do you say? Yeah, very good. Restore my soul. My soul. He led me in the past of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, <laughs> this version is very special, new international version. Yeah, good, that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. How do you represent this? Oh, yes. Shadow. No? Shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Repeat again, please. I will fear no evil. Amen. For you are with me, the good shepherd. You wrote and your staff, they conform me. How do you say conform me? In, in your conform me, right? Conform me here. Conform me. You prepare a table before me. Go ahead, I don't hear you. You, verse A, verse five, you prepare a table, a table, thank you, a table before me in pre the presence of my, you, you have enemy or no? You have enemy? I don't want it, but I don't, I don't want it, but 
I had, Jesus had, had an uh, enemy, right? So you anoint my head with oil, right? My cup runs over. Surely, go ahead, go ahead, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow, follow, follow me. You need to go ahead. You need to walk by faith in life. And follow goodness. Ah, mercy and goodness all the days of my life. Are you sure? Yes, yeah, repeat, please. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house forever. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Well, where the path is ended? The house of the Lord. Yes, our journey in life has a destiny with God. Amen. Amen. The good shepherd who says, I am the good shepherd. Who is the good shepherd? Jesus. Please open your Bible in John. Open your Bible wherever you are. Open your Bible also. John 10, 11. Ready? I am. I am. I am. The good shepherd is Yahweh. Yahweh is Yahweh. The Old Testament is Jesus. I am the eternal present. Wow. So, Jesus is right now here, right? In the heaven. His Holy Spirit is in, with us, among us. So, who is your shepherd? The morning is my shepherd? Or science of technology? Education, nothing and nobody can substitute God as you, our guide, protector, provider, loving father, omnip omnipotent, omnipotent, and faithful Lord. Who is your shepherd? David. No knew who was his shepherd. And you? Nothing will be locking you in physical, mental, spiritual, and even social dimension. Everything is provided. 1,000 years after David, Jesus was in the middle, arguing with the religious Jewish leaders. And he took these words. I am the good shepherd. But what more? What is the, uh, how can I know who is the good shepherd? Look at this in the same 
in the following, in the verse 12, in the, in the verse 12, no, in, the, in, the, the good she, in the 11, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Who is the good shepherd? Jesus died for you because he loved you so much. So, this metaphor of Jesus as a good shepherd symbolizes his compassion, guidance, and willingness to protect and provide for his followers. It emphasizes the intimate and personal relationship that Jesus has with those who believe in him, offering comfort, guidance, and salvation. So think about your shepherd every day because every day the shepherd wants eagerly to guide you and speak out his, how do you say, his agenda for this day. And you need to be, pay attention. But we are very worried, very worried, very, very sad. And you don't pay attention what the good shepherd tells you. So you need to concentrate, put your mind in the heaven where is your good shepherd. What dangers we, we have as a lamb? What dangers? Temptation and sin. Yeah? Temptation, inclination to sin. Yes, moral temptations. Worldly desires. Wow, succumbing to harmful behaviors. So these behaviors produce spiritual harm and distance us from God. False teachings and deception, like in Sabbath school lesson, do you remember? Persecution and opposition. Throughout history, followers of God has faced persecution, discrimination, and opposition due to their faith. Spiritual let, let, lethargy, it's correct? Lethargy and distraction. Complacency, spiritual apathy, and being consumed by worldly distraction. Wow, it's essential for believers to guard against becoming look, lukewarm in their faith and to remain focused, focused on cultivating a vibrant relationship with God. Other problem is doubt, doubt and spiritual crisis. Believers may encounter, encounter season of doubt question their faith or experience a spiritual crisis. This challenge can shake one's foundation and require a deep reflection, seeking answer and drawing closer to God for reassurance and understanding. Other problem, pride and self-reliance, self-confidence. Lack of spiritual disciplines, Negl neglecting spiritual disciplines such as prayer, Bible study, worship, and fellowship can leave believers spiritual weak and vulnerable. So regular engagement in this practice helps nurture spiritual growth, stress, and resilience. It's important for us that God's lambs to be aware of these potential dangers seeking God's wisdom. So think about this. Well, we need, well, 
certain characteristic like the lambs of God, of, of God, humility, trust and obedience, dependence, sacrifice, community and fellowship. Some, some things or to do and to remain in with us. I was, I go on to share with you a little bit how I was lost. I was lost, Chip. And he came to find me and save me. He also called me to this sacred ministry to be a partner in redemption and assist assistant to the Prince of Shepherds and High Priest of our souls. In 1979, long time ago, right? I was in the middle of so many people in Mexico City, without God, without hope, empty and meaningless, nobody invited me to be a Christian. God told me directly to me months before knowing the Adventist church. Ah, I was beautiful, a beautiful afternoon on the camp, a university campus when I studied, surrounded by trees. I was coming home and waiting for the trolley bus. Trolley bus? I had a form of ecstasy. It was a sunset, and the sky was bright and electric pink, like the color of a rose when it's withering. I felt like I was in an elevator, and he suddenly stopped. Do you have felt this sensation? Suddenly stop. God indicated to me that he was going to be an announcer of important message that the world needed to know. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't even have a Bible at home. Months later, while in my house, we had a brother suffering because of his sick emotions. I felt that I had to lock myself in my room and think about what I was going to do with my life. I was in concentration, concentration, concentrating on my studies. I, I couldn't continue with it, this situation any longer. I put myself in a meditative position and three clear and deep conviction of what I should do came to my mind. I have to stop, I had to start studying. Number two, I had to start working to financially support my family. And I have to learn, three, I have to learn about something in the future that will completely change my life. That is how I started working there in November at the department store during the Christian season. One call, a rainy night, while I was returning home, I heard sounds and curious I approached and noticed that it was a church. I thought at the first that it was a house I went in and listening to a sermon from a person that simply presented me with the biblical, biblical advice for life. One of them was to be wise as snakes and simple as doves. That vivid Im image of the snake and the dove was like a bolt of lightning that lit up my mind. That man was wiser than the professor of the university. God's wisdom is infinitely superior to human wisdom. 
At the end of the service, they gave me a new testament, a booklet to study the Bible by topic. I bought a Bible. I went home happy with my Bible. Well, this is my story. A little bit, because I was a lost lamb. But you need to understand that you need to, to be guided by the great shepherd. Consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. Let us your prayer be taken me, O Lord, as well it thing time. I lay my, all my plans and thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide me, abide with me, and let all my work be wrought in thee. This is a daily matter. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day. Surrender all your plans to Him to be carried up, carry up out, or given up as His providence shall indicate. Thus, day by day, you you molded more and more after the life of Christ. A life in Christ is a life of restfulness. So think about it's precious. Jesus said, abide in me. Yeah, abide in me. Again, he invites us, come unto me. I will give you rest. Come. The words of the psalmist, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. This rest is not found in inactivity. For in the savored invitation, the promise of rest is united with the call to labor. Take my joke, joke upon you, and yet, and yet, shall find rest. So they invite others to come to our Lamb and Great Shepherd. The Spirit and the Bride say, "Come, come, and let the one who hears say, come." Let the one who is thirsty come and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of the life of life. So pay attention what the great shepherd told tell you every day. Hearing God's voice is not optional. It's not optional. To hear God clearly, we must live in the habit of meditation of his word, the word of God. Do we remember the story of little boy Samuel? Hear the voice of God. Know the good shepherd. The good shepherd said, say, say, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot be bear fruit of itself except it abides in the vine, no more can yet, except ye abide in me. So this is an invitation this Sabbath, no morning, but this is my, the invitation of God. Look at this uh, Ellen G. White. Um, Quote, an intensity such as never before was seen is taking possession of the world. It's amusement, in money, in am amusement, in money making, in the contest for power, in the very struggle for existence. There is a terrible force that engrossed body and mind and soul. In the midst of the madness, Rush, God is speaking. He bids us come apart and commute with Him. Be still and know that I am God. Many, even in their season of devotion, fail 
of receiving the blessing of real communion with God. They are in two gray heads. With hurried steps they press through the circle of Christ's loving presence, pausing perhaps a moment within the sacred, sacred precincts, but no waiting for counsel. They have no time to remain with the divine teacher. With their burdens, they return to their work. These workers can never, can never attain the highest success until they learn the secret of strength. They must give themselves time to think, to pray, to wait, to wait upon God for a renewal of physical, mental, and spiritual power. They need the uplifting influence of his spirit. Receiving this, they will be quickened by a fresh life. So the tired brain will be refreshed. The burning heart will be lightened. So this is the God's word. Christ in his life on earth made no plans for himself. Uh, he accepted God's plan for him, and day by day the Father unfolded his plan. So is, this is Jesus, the good shepherd. So think about you, about me. We need time with God alone, with our good, great prince of the shepherd. So things, he now he invites us. If you are tr struggling and tired, I can give you relief. Come to me, all who, you who labor and are heaven laden. The shepherd is the door of entrance to heaven, is the way and the lamb he is our highest priest. Behold, he, say, he says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and the dinner is prepared, and he will me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, do you have an ear? Who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church of St. John today. Can you accept this invitation? Could you? Please stand up and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I have given them your word according to your command. I ask that those who are yours, you bless them with your spirit. I beg you to keep us together with you and your flock. Let us learn from you to be meek and humble of heart, to work for others so they know you and are also part of your sheep. Help us to hear your voice every day as we meditate on your word and your works. Teach us to learn from the Spirit to identify your voice when you speak to us. Help us to pray fervently and to be faithful and compassionate to others as you are to us. To maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bound of peace in our families in our church, in our community, 
comes soon to meet us to never be separated from you anymore. Heal those sick among your people. Comfort the afflicted. Strengthen the weak. Encourage the discouraged. Feed the hungry and give us your direction and power to do your will under any circumstances. Hold us tight so we don't fall into temptation, Lord. We want to see you come, O oh, Prince of all shepherds. O oh, good shepherds, come quickly for us, your sheep, to, reuni to reunite and never separate again. We beg, we beg you in the merits of your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please sit down. couldn't help but think as Pastor Steve was preaching. You look at the signs of the times and we see how much is in this world. We need Jesus now more than ever. Amen. This world is coming fastly to a close. And even though you might think, well, I've got lots of time yet, let me tell you, Nobody really knows how much time we have, only the Father. And it's very important that Jesus lead us where, whatever we do, wherever we go. We need Jesus now more than ever. This, things are bad, yes, upon this earth. But our Bible tells us it's going to get much worse. We need Jesus now more than ever. Let's stand, shall we, as we sing our closing song, number 537. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught, whate'er I do, wherever I be, Still, tis God's hand that leadeth me. He knows the end from the beginning and all points in between. And I'd rather stay with him. I'd rather take my chance with God than my chance with this world. And I pray that is your prayer this morning. And stand as we sing, he leadeth me.
my task on earth is done. When by thy grace, his grace, the victory has been won. Even death's cold wave, I will not bear, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He is the only one that can take care of me. And I pray this morning that when that trumpet sounds, that each one of us will arise and go in the first resurrection or be caught up with him. If you're not sure of that this morning, then you need to make matters right with God this morning. Let's sing verse 4, shall we, when my task on earth is done. friends, and you that see us from the internet or hear by the radio, may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.